Hey guys, Phoenix Spring Tower here. So in this pick a card reading, we'll be looking into what energy consciousness are you moving into now? So what energy vibration, what frequency can you expect in your future reality? And how to recognize when you're in the frequency. So what clues would make themselves available to you? So we have three piles to choose from. Go with your first instincts. You could choose more than one pile. And also in this reading, try to use your intuition to derive your own messages or to attune the messages that um, you receive to your personal circumstances. All right. So this would be a really good exercise to further strengthen your intuition and your discernment. All right. So three piles, as I said, pile number one, pile number two, pile number three. Take a moment, pause, go with your first instincts. You could choose more than one pile, and I'll see you in your reading. Bye for now. All right, so pile number one. Energy, what energy, consciousness, and vibration are you moving into, and how to know when you've reached it? So for you guys, right off the bat, I'm being told that one of the energy... Um, that you guys are moving into an energy consciousness of elevation, Okay. So for the, I'm going to provide you guys with immediate channel messages, and that way you can see whether this pile resonates with you or not. Um, and then I'll tune into further messages as I shuffle um, your tower cards on camera. Okay. So pile number one, you guys are moving on from a circumstance or a situation in which you are picking up that you're not entirely happy with it. It's as if you are outgrown or you feel that the situation that you're in is holding you back and you feel that it's time now. Time and the element of time and timing is coming through really strongly for you guys. It's like I'm seeing the hangman energy as I'm holding this card in my head where you've been in a stasis or you've been in limbo and now like you're getting that inspiration or that feeling of enlightenment to move on from that state. And in terms of moving on, the advice is to let your intuition guide you. It's to follow your bliss. It's to know the what, but not the how, right? So that's what's coming through very strongly with this moving on. Now, as a clarifier for this moving on, we have the devil energy. And as you can see with the devil energy, these are two people who seem to be chained and they seem to can't move. So that's a contradiction to this moving on energy here. But what I'm picking up specifically with this is that a lot of this is mental stuckness or limiting belief about yourself and about the situation. So I'm being, being told limiting beliefs about what you deserve or limited beliefs about your capabilities and having a true awareness of how expansive your capabilities and your potential are. So you may have someone who is a significant other in your life who doesn't feel or see or believe your potential. And this, well, this could be someone or it could, a matter of fact, be you. You know, you are the person, you are in the process of leaving behind or moving on from this way of thinking. So the next card we have here for you guys is the temperance energy. And here we have 11. And they're bringing my attention to master, enough, master number 11. And mind you, this also reduces to a 2 as well if any of these numbers are significant to you. But as I say master number 11, note that in this card, we have the person has their wings and they're holding all the tools they need in life at their disposal. So this is saying to be you know, to be moving on from this situation or to be elevating in this consciousness that you guys are more than ready to do this. Especially with that master number 11 energy. 11 always talks about timings. It talks about synchronicities and timing is coming up again and now is the time. You guys are picking up a done, you're all the way done, done with whatever situation this devil energy is. It's like you guys are really and truly moving on from it. It's like you've come into a realization of your worth and your potential. And just, just one moment, guys. Let me just pick up if there's anything else. They were just giving me the messages and then it just went blank. Yeah, they drawing me to this hair again, which is talking about the coat. They're drawing me to the coat hair. It's like your coat is on and you're ready to go. You know, it's like you can't wait, like you're mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually ready to move on. 
and with the king of swords as well they're drawing me to the king of swords now it's like you can't be mentally or emotionally manipulated by anyone anymore and dare i say not even by yourself you know you've reached a level of discernment and intuition now they're saying it's at an all-time high and you're ready to make the tough choices in your life and perhaps you were not ready before or the tough choices that you have the clarity to make now. These are choices that you may have been too afraid to make of a few months ago. Or it may not have been even in your conscious awareness to make these choices a few months ago. As you either hadn't matured yet or you hadn't reached the level of clarity or the level of consciousness yet. But what they're saying is that now you have it. So you have whatever this devil situation that you're moving on from. Notice that we have the king with the sword who is going to cut these chains. So it's cutting your codependency on someone, cutting that situation out of your life. You know it's not long longer serving you. You don't really need it anymore. Yeah. It's about you. It's about what it is that you want. It's like the universe is listening. And with having all these tools, these life tools at your disposal now, it's like your energy is really potent at this time and it's really potent right now. So pay particular attention to your thoughts. Like notice his eyes are closed and they're downcast, almost like he's praying, he's meditating, he's wishing on something. So because your energy is so potent right now, really pay attention to that because a lot of things, because you could really expect at this time some unexpected blessings or to receive unexpected news, unexpected surprises and opportunities. And the universe is sending these and they're sending these to affirm or reaffirm for you that you're on the right track and to help you keep the momentum and moving towards that higher frequency you're moving towards, that you need, that you want to move towards to. Want to move towards to. Sorry, I could have used better English. I'm channeling. Because again, they're saying the reason why they're reaffirming, the reason why they want you to press forward and move forward, it's a matter of timing. Like, timing is very, very important for you guys. It's almost as if you need to catch, like, a spiritual train on a life path and you need to get on the platform, get, on the, get to the station, get on the right platform at a particular time because that train is leaving the station. There's just something about time that's coming through for you all. You know, so it could be like the universe's timing, you know, like it's your life path or like something that you have planned. It's like, it's almost as if the spirit, thank you spirit guys, like they're clarifying it for me now. Sorry, I was just talking it through, but they've clarified it. It's like in our life, they're showing me in your Akashic records, in your life path, there are certain situations and circumstances in your life that are hard coded into your life path that you need to hit. And it's as if for you guys, where you guys, the energy, consciousness and elevation that you're moving to, is that's hard coded. So it's going to happen regardless. It's meant to happen regardless. Right? That's what they're saying to me here. So for some of you, no, no they're telling me that I've labored the point enough, so I'll move on. So the next card we have here is a solar plexus energy, referring to your solar plexus chakra. What they're saying with this card to me, pile number one, is that this is um, coming to terms with your truth. So they're guiding me here of this solar plexus, coming to terms with your truth. They're pairing it up with the devil card and the devil energy here. And what this is talking about is beginning to see your true self through the lens. Like they're saying that you guys currently see yourself and you see your potential through a lens that's not the whole truth. It's like it's a limiting belief or it's a program that keeps you operating in a place where you're less than, where you're half of yourself. And what they're saying is that with the solar plexus healing, like there's a healing, there's an elevation, there's an expansion that's coming with this energy. And with this solar plexus healing, they say, notice some um, with the eight of swords here as well. So this is sort of echoing and mirroring the devil card. So with this solar plexus energy here in the middle, like you're coming into a, an awareness of your programming, a conscious awareness of these limiting beliefs that have become habit for you. And this elevation is going to take you out of it. 
So swords appear quite heavily in your reading, pile number one. We have the, you have the king of swords here with balance. You have the swords happening here as well. You're also surrounded by eight swords here. So it's like with this king of swords card, which is your intuition, which is your discretion, which is an awareness of your potential and who you are. Again, you're using the sword to break you away from these limiting beliefs we see with the devil here. And you're also using the sword to unbind your karmic cords and to unbind that blindfold off your eyes. I'm receiving a specific message here for one or a few of you that people can no longer pull the wool over your eyes anymore. It's like you could see right through people that are around you and you could see the games that you're, they, they are playing. And what they're saying to me, this is a specific message again, that you're walking out of the prison that these people have set for you. Which they're saying is really a prison they've set for themselves as they're the ones who are going to be receiving the karma for what they did for you, for the prison that they've put you in, for the chains that they've put you in. But for others, this prison um, quote unquote, maybe self-imposed. So it's a prison either imposed by other people or it's a prison of limiting belief that you've imposed on yourself due to old programming that may have developed through generational trauma or in your childhood. You know, it's old limiting beliefs or programming um, that may have come out of the way you were raised or from your parents when your parents were in survival mode. So whatever is the case or however it resonates, it's a collective reading. I can't discuss every single situation, but if you want to dig into this further, you could book a personal reading with me if you wish to know more. Yeah, anything else? I'm also picking up as well with this Eight of Swords and your solar plexus again. So this personal programming or limiting beliefs that you're going, that you're in, the reason for it or the fact that you have this program running, a lot of people may not know about or they may not understand the severity of how it impacts you. That's another message that is coming through. But know with this moving on energy, so notice that you're moving from the darkness into the light here. You're cutting the cords of the, um, the devil with your sword. You, through this process of moving on, you are healing the solar plexus and you're beginning to recognize your truth. All right. So this brings us to how, what is the clue or how do we know that we have reached this um, energy consciousness vibration? We've reached the, the destination, so to speak. So with the five, so with this five card, which is talking about financial and material changes, There is a lot of energy coming through this, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, they had me pull quite a few cards for this to clarify this. But first and foremost, fives talk about challenges. Fives also talk about challenges that prompt us to change, right? So they're also drawing me to the red on the border of this card, which is saying a lot, which is saying that you are, a lot of what you're currently relying on that's familiar to you, that you associate with stability, a lot of that is going to change, right? And this change can come in a number of different forms. It can come in a number of different ways. So for some of you, pile three, with this ace of pentacles, this could be an opportunity that's coming in for you, an opportunity that's given from someone external to you. And we could also see that with the page where you're receiving news, so this is an opportunity, you will receive news of this opportunity, and this could be an indicator that you've reached that, this future um, this future reality that we've talked about. Um, for some of you with the judgment card, which we also have as well, to explain this, the judgment card represents an opportunity for you to elevate to your truth, to your calling, to what you know you deserve. Right. So that's another sign like someone may come to you and someone may give you like they're telling me they're showing me this in my mind's eye for some of you. Pile number one, like this may be a realization, just a, a download, an intuitive download. You may get it in a dream. You an idea may just pop into your head. And if an idea pops into your head, that's your guardian angel or that's someone just giving you a realization that's so riveting. You can't move on from it. You have no other choice but to answer the call. Another message that I'm picking up um, with this moon energy 
is that it could be that you are getting some information from people external and again this is that realization information a realization two plus two makes four something is going to be disclosed to you and you would have no other choice but to move on from the situation and again we see it with the road ahead we see it with the archway it's as if you always suspected this but you get some final confirmation and that confirmation is that's all i need to know i am ready to pick up and go i am not wasting any more time in this situation right and again we have this temperance and we have this king of swords energy like you're in a state of you're in a you're in a potent sense of heightened intuition and discernment you're going to be making changes in your life left right and center these changes are going to come in swift these changes are going to come in fast people are going to wonder well where did all of this come from but what they wouldn't understand part number one is that you guys have been doing the work in the background they may not have been able to see it but you've been doing the work in the background you've been getting the spiritual downloads you've been working on yourself you're coming into your, the awareness of your potential and your value anything else they want me to, they're drawing me to the synchronicities again. Oh, we have one more card, sorry, the Empress energy. So this is that final energy, that final state that you guys are going to be in here. And they're drawing me to the fact that this is a three. So we have three, the synchronicity of the three occurring, the master number three. We have master number 11 making an appearance in here as well. So they're wanting me to reconfirm that these are really powerful, powerful energies. We also have the judgment card, which is 10, 10. So I, I know it reduces to a two, but again, 10, 10, we have one, one that features in here. We have one, one here as well. So this, what they want me to bring my attention to, pile number one, is that you guys are being heavily guided. We can see the, guard, um, the guardian angel with the wings here. You guys are being highly guarded, highly protected. You may not be able to see the how you're going to do it. They're advising you to put one foot ahead of the other. But this, before my readings are generally good for six to nine months, so between now and the end of this year, what they're showing me here with this Empress energy, this energy is one of putting aside the master number three. It's like this energy of one, is one of a divine feminine boss. And even if you're male, this is your divine feminine energy that you'd be tuning in and balancing out and bringing to the forefront. So it's a financial, emotional success and abundance. But more to the point, it's your reality in this reality that's coming up you guys are movers you guys are shakers you guys make things happen you all will be taking on a high profile or leadership role it's almost like celebrity status in a way or publicity in a way because they're telling me publicity because what they're saying is that there's no hiding anymore so you're going from the eight of swords where you played small or you hid yourself away like this is no more you're moving from an eight of swords all the way to an empress so you're in, this is a mode of expansion, right? It's a mode of blessings upon blessings. The realization of these blessings and what they would look like would vary from person to person. So really use your intuition to gain an understanding of what this energy is going to mean for you. So whatever it is that you're fixated on, know that it can happen. What I'm picking up with this energy as well is that people would be reaching out to you, reaching out to you for guidance, for assistance. You know, your light is going to be shining so bright here that people would be drawn to you, but they'd be drawn to what you're offering. They also asked me to say that you guys are operating in a stance of protection because they're drawing me to the halo around this empress's head and the halo that's also around this person, this angel here. So you're operating in protection. Yeah, but I didn't realize this before with the ring, but they're telling me it now because it applies now. Okay, do I need to draw any more cards? No. Okay, guys, I wanted to draw more cards, but they've told me that all the messages that I have to deliver for now, I, we have delivered. So again, as I said, my readings are good for six to nine months. But because one, six months to a year, yeah, because one features so prominently the majority of this of you guys should see this energy is within a year but of course timelines are fluid and everyone has free will and the choices they make 
So know that this is a possibility. You know, you guys could expand to greater than this. So guys, if this resonated with you, let me know in the comments down below. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in another pile or in another reading. Thank you again for watching and for your support. Bye for now. All right, so pile number two. What energy, consciousness, or vibration are you moving into? And how are you to know when you've received it or when you've arrived? So I'll go into immediate channeled messages and this way you could see whether this pile resonates with you or not. And then I'll get further energies from the tarot. Okay, so I'll shuffle on camera to get those further messages. Okay, so pile number two. The initial energy that I'm getting from this and the card that you guys selected is this now for begins energy, which is such a beautiful, beautiful, peaceful energy, I feel for this pile. It's as if for you guys, I'm tuning into your higher self. This is an energy of compassion. It's an energy of forgiveness. And I'm getting the message here. I know it's hard. It's tough. But know that you are loved. Like that's a message that I'm getting through. I'm also picking up that your guides are around you at this time. And they are around you and they're pouring into you. They're pouring love. They're pouring understanding. They're pouring compassion into you. And I'm being told that many of you have been through a dark and a difficult time as well from a soul, um, dark night of the soul sort of perspective. What I'm also pulling through as well for some of you is that some of you may be having someone who is really, who has just entered your life, newly entered your life. Some of you may be newly engaged. Some of you may have been newly married or you're just meeting this person. It doesn't have to be romantic. It could be platonic. It could represent your soul tribe, but notice that we have different sleeves here, and this is talking about different hands and people pouring from the same cup. So this is talking about someone who really sees you, who really understands you. They know what it takes to fill your cup up. And not only that, they come from a position or the state or the energy vibration and frequency they have is one where they have enough to also give to you or they recognize your worth, they recognize and understand what you're going through, and they want to pour into you as well. They want to travel this road and this journey with you. Okay, so this could be someone in the physical, tangible reality, or this could represent your spirit guide team. It's interesting with these two cards, with the temperance card and with the love begins, we have rainbows in the background. So this is talking about emotional fulfillment. It's talking about chakra and energy alignment. Like you would know this person when they're there, but this is this could be someone in a physical reality, someone coming into your energies right now, or it could be your spirit guide team. Okay. Now with this, we have the devil energy coming in here with temptation along the road. So it appears, um, for some of you, I'm feeling, so we talked about that dark night of the soul or a difficult situation coming up for you that you guys are currently in. And for a lot of you, this situation, I'm being told Grand, Grand Hog State, or I'm being told is like a negative situation and a negative energy that you feel is playing in a loop. And this can make you feel helpless. This situation or this negativity or whatever it is can make you feel help, is making you feel helpless, defeated, and to a certain extent, depleted, right? I'm picking that up here. I'm picking up that there is something that is constantly triggering you and you can't seem to get out of the loop of being triggered or reacting to it. You can't seem to move on from it. And the reason why I'm talking about that, you guys want to move on with the Six of Swords. You guys are trying to understand, okay, how do I get onto this situation? What do I need to know? What wisdom do I need to know? How? What tools do I need to get out of this situation and move away? But this has come through reverse. It seems that you can't. Notice the blue hair and the blue in the water and trying to move away. And notice it's the same sort of shade blue, but you can't move away. It's like you're running on the spot. It's like your, your wheels are spinning in mud. So take this as a situation, you know, sometimes, and they're just giving me this example, you know, sometimes when you are, it's the same nonsense, but different people or a different situation, but a particular theme keeps on coming up. So for some of you, that could be referring to this situation. Yeah, so it's looking to separate yourself from a person, from a place, from a thing but you've not quite been able to. And it's interesting, the Eight of Swords also came through in pile number one, so there may be a message there for you. But it's not only trying to move out of it, but you can't see a way how. 
You've tried, you've made a number of false starts, but you can't see a way how, you're not going anywhere. And this is what's leaving you. This is the energy I was picking up at the very beginning of being dejected, of being depleted, of not knowing what to do. But know that people or your spirit guide team or someone is coming in to replenish you, to restore you, to pour that love, that understanding, that compassion and that support into you with this one energy. Like you're linking up with someone to become one or someone sees you. And that's the thing, it's being seen for what you guys are going through. Someone's going to understand. So this is a general reading, so only take what resonates. Use your intuition to make sense of the messages, to make sense of the card, to apply it to your reality. Now, I'm being told the need to retreat and the need to recover mentally, emotionally, spiritually as well to ensure that your cup is being filled up like i'm being told that a lot of you are running on empty i'm also being re told again that there may be a message for you guys in pile number one because they also got the temperance energy we have the temperance energy here they got the devil energy as well so again different cards but different decks but the same cards are coming through so just check out pile number one as well now what gives this energy promise is this number one card of the love begins and also the knight of pentacles so some of you all may have met this person or you have connected with this spirit guide or with the spirit guide team for others of you with the knight of pentacles this is an energy that's coming in and knights knight of the knight of pentacles unfortunately is the slowest card in the deck so this energy is taking its sweet time but know that the energy is coming in this knight of pentacles is coming in we can rely on it to come in and what i like about this knight of pentacles energy here is that when we compare it to the hope card notice the pentacle and notice the sun on this card this orb so notice the person inside this card that's being held this person is you, you know, so what they're saying here is to not lose hope, like you guys are being supported, you're being protected, on the other side, I'm channeling a message now that this could be a loved one who passed on to the other side, who they are by your side, they're looking out for you, they're protecting you, I'm being told that they send you messages in your dreams, they send you synchronicities, you know, which could help give you hope. I'm also being told as well of being drawn to this Four of Pentacles energy. Now this Four of Pentacles, if you look at this guy really carefully, he's holding on really tightly to something. But what they're intuitively telling me here, like when you're holding on tightly to something like this, like your feet are on it, like you're trying to hide it, one is under your bum, one you're holding on, you're grasping onto it so tightly. It's almost as if you believe that nothing better could come in for you or you believe that there is nothing else or you don't trust anyone else or anything else. But they're saying to let go and not hold on so tightly, have hope, have trust. So for, that you can move on and leave this situation, this person, this place, this thing behind. Some of you, I'm being, I'm being told intuitively that on that message, some of you may be saying it's easier said than done, you know, with this two of pentacles, like your situation or whatever is causing this situation is quite complicated. So for instance, it may be giving me the example of a custody case with an energy vampire, or you may be living with someone who you want to separate from, but they're giving you a hard time. You know what? They showed me Bethany Frankel, like she has a show about her 10 year divorce after two years. Like she was married for two years, but her divorce proceedings took 10 years, you know? So they're showing me that level of complication. Like for a lot of you, they want to recognize that this is not easy, you know? You being here is a matter that this is the best it can be for now. Like the spiritual karmic cords are so severe and to sever them, it's just so complicated. You know, it could be a moral dilemma. It could be a financial dilemma with the juggling of the coins and the rough waters behind. That means that it's not so easy to leave. And again, the fact that it's not so easy to leave, a lot of you have given up hope, you're tired, you're depleted, you're drained, you feel this is as good as it's going to get, so you're going to stay right here. But again, they want to impress with this Wheel of Fortune card coming in, that there is relief coming in for you guys. 
and it's going to come and it's going to happen out of the blue when you least expect it but i'm being told that it's a blessing so with this love begins this could be the, this could more li more likely than not take the form of this love begins energy here the universe knows what you're going through they've acknowledged it they are sending blessings to you is what i'm being told Now, with the shadow work or element at play here, now how this energy consciousness is going to manifest is that you are going to become aware, consciously aware, have conscious awareness of the reason for this karmic loop and this karmic situation that you're in with this temptation card. Why do you keep on going back? Why do you keep on going back? You're going to be, have conscious awareness of this. When you gain conscious awareness of this, guys, it's as if this is going to be emotionally liberating for you. It's going to be your aha moment. And you're going to take really fast with this Knight of Wands. You're going to take speedy, fast, practical steps to heal this karmic loop, to heal the, um, these emotional wands, wounds, sorry. <laughs> what not? It's the Knight of Wands, healing wounds. But you're really going to take the opportunity once you become consciously aware of this shadow loop or why this problem presents itself, you're going to tackle it head on. And you're not going to rest until you've fully under understood it. So what they're showing me here is that this could take, this taking it head on could take the form of you guys, um, receiving training about it you may do a course for instance to improve your job skills you may join a social group of like-minded people for support you may seek the help of a therapist of a spiritual healer right or you may choose to take on a second job with the three of pentacles so you could save money or look to change job into something else that would give you more money and give you more financial security or you may choose to um, they're giving me the divorce situ and the um, custody situation again. You may choose to change lawyer or find someone who could give you, who is a professional, who could give you that practical knowledge and support. And what you would find, particularly with the Wheel of um, Fortune card that came up, is that these answers are going to become easier to find and easier to access and digest and act upon because you've become consciously aware of the shadow element that, was pre that you were previously unaware of that's kept you stuck. You're going to tackle it head on. And you're going to tackle it head on from the perspective that you do not want to repeat this lesson again. You don't want to put yourself in this position of vulnerability and being codependent on others or whatever form it may take. All right. I'm being told that let's pull some more cards to see what other energies come through. Oh, oh my God, my cards are all over the shop. It's a good thing I checked. Okay. Okay, so... Spirit guide, guide and angel, thank you for those messages so far. What else for pile number two? What else does pile number two need to know about this conscious energy that they are moving? Ah, that they're moving into. Okay, so they toppled all my cards over to give me one, and notice how this has come about. This is the high priestess. The high priestess has come about sideways right the high priestess has come about sideways and it's come across hope and it's come across shadow so the high priestess here is talking about wisdom it's talking about and notice the dark side of the moon so that's talking about shadow as well notice the dark pillar here that's talking about shadow notice the synchronicities here about the shadow and the light Guys, you saw me sh um, shuffling on camera. Notice the purple in this and the purple hair. And the cat hair represents wisdom, that in a knowing it represents truth, your truth. Right? So the fact that this has come through over this, it's like in terms of the energy of the reality that you're moving into, it's one of wisdom, it's one of awareness, and it's one of healing of your shadow. Whatever was um, subconscious, you're going to have conscious awareness of it, of the reason why you're in sort of like this karmic loop, and it's going to come, and healing is going to come from it. Like that is just them reinforcing this message. Let me just see if there's anything else. 
this high priestess is a brilliant card to have to get there's an expansion of intuition as well you guys would also be moving into a, a career where you may possibly be helping other people as well who have been in a similar situation to you so you may make a career out of that or you may make a business out of it yeah so anyone else with the five of cups who has gone through what you guys are going through as well feeling dejected feeling lost feeling like a fish out of water not knowing where to go it's as if the lessons you guys have learned you could then bring hope to other people as well yeah that's the thing and with the emperor like as i said before you guys are putting are, are going to elevate to a point where this situation you are not allow it to happen or come into your frequency or come into your vibration ever again you guys are going to become masters of your own destiny and you're going to be with this ten of swords so those people who have encountered this with the um ten of swords with being stabbed in the back with feeling lost and this looped situation and not being able to see their way it's like you or this that this could also represent you guys as well it says if this is the end goal, like you guys are going to gain mastery over this with the emperor energy. Okay, guys, so that is it from me. I don't have any further messages. I hope this resonated with you. If it did, let me know how in the comments down below. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in future readings. Bye for now. So last but not least, pile number three. What energy consciousness or vibration are you moving into and how you how would you know when you've reached it? So I'll go into immediate channel messages. This way you can see whether you resonate with this pile or not. And then I'll tune into your energies further with shuffling car, um, tarot on camera. Okay, so pile number three. You know what energy I get from you guys? Firstly, chose the triumph card, which is the chariot. And the initial energy that I was getting from this card, they showed me an image of dog racing. You know when the dogs are racing around the track, chasing the hare or chasing like a rabbit? So they're giving this to me to mean that you guys are on a roll and there's no stopping you. Like you guys are in your stride. They're drawing me to the fact that these two cards have black borders as well. And we didn't get black bordered cards with other piles. So they're saying to me that black could be used to show that for you guys, you guys have blinkered vision on, like nothing else exists. Or, or they're saying for some of you, nothing else should exist at this point because you guys need to be so focused right now. So if there's a dream, pile number three, that you have in mind or something you wish to do, they're saying that this is the level of effort that you need to take to achieve your wish. Because very lastly, the how you guys know, we're, I'm going to jump to the end of this reading to come back to the start, but they're saying how you would know that you've reached the energy vibration of your future state is through your wish fulfillment, right? They're saying that, but that there's some wish that you guys have pile number three that you guys it may be a private wish it may be something that you're striving for and everyone knows that you're working towards it so they're giving me for instance some of you guys may be in your final year of university and your final year exams that are coming up that's the sort of thing that they are referring to the fulfillment of a wish so however they're saying that nothing in the future here is guaranteed all right so there are a few steps that you need to go through in order to get to this end state so we're going to go back to the beginning and work through the steps of how to get there all right so know that this um, that university example that i gave is just an example it doesn't mean that you have to be at university for this reading to resonate with you again use the messages use your intuition to apply the cards and the messages to your own personal situation so they make sense for you okay um what else is there yeah, besides the university situation, they're also saying to expand it beyond that. Like there's a dream, pile number three, that you have in mind, something that you wish to do. They're saying that there's a lot of level of effort to achieve this wish. Okay, sorry, I'm just reestablishing myself as to where I am. Now, the seven of cups here, the seven here moons movement, and we also have seven of cups. So we have two sevens on the board. Now, in terms of the movement, this Seven of Cups is representing goals. But before I get to the goals, they're bringing me to the Knight of Wands. So the Knight of Wands, in this case, is talking about movement with passion and movement with fire and movement with determination. However, 
for some of you, there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of action happening, but they're explaining to me that it's being done with hesitancy or uncertainty, as for some of you, with regards to what the goals are and with regards to what you're working towards. And that's where the two, we have two sevens, that's where the seven of cups comes in. So this is something here, you guys, about being sure of what the target and what your goal is. Sorry, there's another message coming through. Just one moment. I had it just now, but I lost it. Um, just one moment, pile number three. Yeah, thank you. So what they're saying with this, um, with the Knight of Wands card, like the Knight of Wands, notice his hand is illuminated and hands like, you know, working with your hands or taking action. That's what this represents in the physical reality. But what they're saying here is that in taking this action, you guys could be so passionate and so driven and so focused. Like, look at the determination in his eyes as he's riding forward. Look at all the dust that he's kicking up. And notice he's also holding a pole. He's also holding a pole here. You're taking charge. You're committed. You're determined. But you need a plan. You need a plan and you need focus is what I'm getting here with the Seven of Cups. Which one of these cups or one or two of these cups are you focusing on? You can't focus on all. All of them can't be the goal. So what they're saying here with the Cups and with the Eight of Swords is that, notice again with the Eight of Swords, there's swords all around, cups all around. What is the focus? What is the direction? Is there perhaps uncertainty or hesitancy about the direction that you're moving into? Now, the reason why I'm raising this, guys, is that they're saying that any uncertainty, any fear, or any lack of focus, they're talking about your ego tying you into knots. So for some of you, this could look like procrastination on getting things done, procrastination about making a choice. It could also talk about perfectionism as well. So do you just want to get things going or do you want to get things right? So there's also perfectionism. You know, make choices... You know, you're afraid of making choices. Uh, oh, sorry. What they're showing me is that you're, some of you are making choices that you are not fully confident that they are the right choice and regretting them later. And a lot of this is your subconscious distracting you from things that need, you know need to be done. So your guides want you to know, and they want me to give you this message, and this is for some of you, and I do apologize for this, but they're asking you to get a grip, to get a plan. They're saying, if you own, they're saying if you only knew how close you are to this wish fulfillment and this wish fulfillment, when you get on the other side of this, notice like a waterfall and you walk through any wish fulfillment is here. What is on the other side can potentially be beyond your wildest dreams. They're saying if only you knew, <laughs> you know, but it requires focus on your side. It requires discipline. Right. Okay. We'll come back more to that later. I don't want to run on that too much. They're also saying that when you do have a few wins, because along the way to getting this wish fulfillment, you are going to have a few wins here. You know, notice the arms are thrown up in celebration and the sun is shining down. So you're going to have a few small wins. But what they're saying is that with these small wins as well, rest and rejuvenation is important because you don't want to be working so hard for some of you that you burn yourself out. All right, so that's another uh, message that is coming through. They still want you to remain focused. You could celebrate the successes, but they still want you to remain focused. These successes that you're going to get quite early on, they're meant to be initial successes. And with the Two of Swords energy that has come through next to the successes as well, they don't want you to settle. They don't want you to rest on these successes. They're small. They're small fry compared to the potential that this nine has for you guys. So they want you to use these initial wins as momentum to keep going. So they're showing me a video game in which you guys plateau and the success is like the plateau. Notice that she's sitting, that, that's a plateau. And it's like you're gaining initial uh, additional points or additional skills are downloaded that could help you on the future levels as you're moving up to this wish fulfillment. They're saying that's how to view these wins. And I hope it makes sense. You know, again, use your intuition to derive meanings from the cards and what I'm saying. So as you pursue, uh, um, I want to go back, to, I want to go to the sacrifice. I don't think I've touched on the sacrifice card. About the sacrifice and the rest and rejuvenation. 
So what they're saying here, and this is a warning, number one, it's a warning about burnout. And it's also a warning about other people's BS at this time and to protect yourself, to keep focused. Part three, I don't know what it is that you guys are going to be up to, but let me know in the comments down below. But when it comes to sacrifice, I feel that along the road, they're saying, with the um, rainbow coming through, you guys are going to be enlightened as to who is for you and who is not for you. So, you know, we talk with the seven of cups of being focused and having a plan and not getting sidetracked and so on. The reason why you guys may have gotten sidetracked is because you're trying to carry too much or trying to bring everyone along with you. So this is talking about sacrifice. Like there are some things that you may want to achieve that needs to be deprioritized for the greater good. So that could be people, it could be places, it could be things, it could be money. They're giving me the image of if you have a goal and you need to save money, that if you need to save money, that a lot of things that you usually get, you may not be able to get anymore. So that's just an example of what we mean here by sacrifice. Now with rest and rejuvenation as well, coming back to this, um, this is talking about being in solitude and I'm seeing with this rest and rejuvenation, this is coming up next to the Hierophant as well. The Hierophant talks about a higher wisdom. It talks about higher knowledge. It talks about the higher way of doing things that you guys are going to adopt because you feel that it could work for you in achieving your goals. But what they're also warning with the seven, we have another seven again. What they're also warning with the seven of pentacles is that a lot of people are not going to get it. They're not going to get your new way of being. They're not going to, when you're acting on this higher knowledge or this higher wisdom or a different way of doing things, they're going to challenge you on it because they don't get it. What your guides are advising here is that if you're truly listening to your instincts as to what is right for you, they say do it and go with it. But know that when you're going against the crowd or when you're going against your own echo chamber, with this rest and relax, rest and rejuvenation, it can be very lonely. Notice that this person is alone. They're in solitude, just in the woods, just in nature. It could be very lonely. So they're advising that you prepare for this. The question they're asking here is whether you are prepared for this, actually. I'm being told that for a lot of you, this may look like a spiritual or a well-being practice that you all may adopt such as meditation with the greenery, like we could see with the way he's sitting with his hands out, that looks like a meditation posture. The fact that he's sitting in, in the forest outdoors, this could be grounding in nature. It could be changing religion, it could be adopting a new religious belief. This could be a whole complete lifestyle overhaul as well. So they're giving me health right now. So if some of you may be wanting to make lifestyle moves to improve your health, that others may view as, as extreme or may mean you needing to isolate or change your habits. You're being advised that if it's your instincts, go for it. So this could look like going on a carnivore diet or you may stop drinking again. And because you do that, because this change is so drastic, a lot of people may not understand. So you may need to be prepared to defend it. All right, but they're advising you to keep on going. Or this could also be, pile um, three, resisting temptation as well. Temptation from things that may potentially throw you off course or throw you off your path. Okay. So with this nine here, we've finally come to the end. We started with the nine, even though it was the end. We started it with the beginning. Now we finally come to it. And it's interesting that this is bordered with green. This is talking about the green chakra fulfillment of which wishes. All the sacrifice that you've made along the way and the isolation and so on they're saying here that it is going to be worth it if you go with you guys pile number three um this card builds on the advice that we've given throughout the reading and what they're saying is your guides are saying with this card is that what you guys are seeking is seeking you and to know that you guys are going to find it and this is also saying as well you guys are going to find this wish fulfillment sooner rather than later it's going to be sooner than you think um, I've been getting September time onwards for a lot of people. They're telling me for this pile, it would relate as well, but a lot of you would get that wish fulfillment even sooner than September, right? You'll start seeing the blessings and the signs of these blessings flowing in. You'd begin to see it. 
you guys also with this blessings card have the sun card here and the sun card is one of the most powerful energies in the deck it's illuminating and it's amplifying this wish fulfillment and that's why i was saying at the beginning like i was tuning into this like this light here and you have the light here and you have the sun behind you here like this is yours what you're seeking is seeking you but what they're also saying is that this wish fulfillment is going to be greater and bigger than you could have ever thought and know that you guys are receiving guidance what i think is interesting about this sun card notice the sun card notice that notice the hand positionings notice the hand positionings here you know that there is something about this higher channeling or tuning into this higher wisdom this higher um, this higher wisdom this higher knowledge these habits there's something key about that focus, discipline, education, and tuning into the higher wisdom habits that your instincts are going to bring through. There is something about that that is critical. It's as if it opens. Notice we have an eye here, and we have the garlands over the third eye and the crown. Notice the tip of the um, triangle, sort of the crown, the tip of it. We have the sun over the crown chakra, the halo. There is something about this higher knowledge, this higher wisdom that expands the space of your consciousness to bring in this wish fulfillment. But to reach to this stage, it's going to take a lot of focus. It's going to take a lot of discipline. It's also going to take sacrifice. Um, now, they're saying, they want me to say again with the sun, I think I said this before, but I'm, they're giving me the message again. With the sun just above the crown chakra and the sun behind, the mount is coming through. Notice the sun is behind you here as well. So know that, and we have the sun behind this person also. So know that your guides are for you. They are illuminating your path. They are trying to work with you to clear the obstacles in front of you right now. Now, the sun with the nine of wands. This nine of wands energy, they're saying to me, is a bittersweet energy. So this is saying that you can't take everyone with you, pile number three. So, you know, we were talking about the sacrifice at the very beginning. They're saying that you can't take everyone with you here. Once you have this wish fulfillment, it's as if there's no going back to what was. Now, mind you, you never say never, but that's just the energies that I'm channeling in this wish fulfillment right now. You know, so this is going to bring in like a new chapter in your life, new people, new soul tribe, new everything. It's, you know, the rest of your life sort of beginning sort of thing. Now, take this as it resonates. It may not resonate with all of you, I would admit. But they're saying resist the temptation of falling back into old habits, falling back into the old crowd, falling back into old way of thinking, into old way of doing things. Notice that the, she's facing all these pillars ahead of her. And what this is saying is once you've had that wish fulfillment and once you've crossed that path, like don't aim to go back to what was, right? Continue moving forward. Okay. What time am I on? Do I need to shuffle anymore? Let me just see part number three, whether there are any further messages that want to come through for you. Notice we have the emperor at the bottom of the deck here. Spirit guys, God and angel, thank you so much for these messages. For part number three, is there anything else that needs to come through? Five of cups and temperance, yeah. This five of cups, when we talk about fives, fives mean challenges, five means disappointments, fives also mean change. And notice with the temperance, we have like a seesaw and balls bouncing on either side. They had said, this is the final message, they're reconfirming. So there are no new messages, pile number three, they're just asking me to reconfirm. Fives, there's, this nine is going to bring a, about a lot of change. It's going to bring about changes in your life, changes in your outlook. Pile number one talked about change. They also got a card similar to the five of cups. So fives talking about change. There's a lot of change that's coming through for you. And there's a lot of change that you need to balance and navigate. Like not all change is easy. Many times changes take time. People don't understand. You could be frustrated sometimes with the amount of time or red tape or loopholes, not loopholes, but you know what I mean, like jumping through hoops or something like that to bring a change about. So they're saying that um, this is something to expect, but know that the fulfillment of this wish is yours. Okay, so that's a mess. That's the final message. It's interesting. I think all decks have gotten the temperance card in one form or other, which is really quite interesting. 
Okay, so pile number three, that's it from me. Let me know whether this resonated with you. If it did, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another pile, or I'll see you in a future reading. Bye for now.